Now when it comes to innovation in modern traditional archery, border of Scotland has been a staple for decades now. Pair that with the ILF system and you got the Tempest. Let's have a closer look. Hello everyone, this is Max from Woodsman's Finest. Welcome to another episode in my Grip to Tip series. Today we're going to be talking about the 21 inch ILF riser by Border Archery called the Tempest um, and a specific pair of limbs I put on it. All of my videos in fact I'm pondering about a lot because there is so much going into these bows. Um, the makers put so much time into innovation testing so many different things about their risers. Um, and limbs and I want to do it justice and I'm pondering over for weeks and months and sometimes even longer um, to actually really do them justice and the Tempest was one of the most difficult ones because what can I say Sid or the Sids of Border of Scotland Border Archery of Scotland um, might be the absolute pinnacle of tinkering and testing when it comes to all of their equipment. I will not manage probably to talk about all the little details of this specific riser because it would probably take, take weeks. Um, listening to how Sid talks about this specific design, um, all the little details when it comes to proportions, when it comes to balance, etc, etc, are absolutely astounding, but I will do my best to do a presentation. Now, right off the bat, I want to say what is my relationship, full disclosure, so to say, um, with Border Archery of Scotland. I bought this riser used from a friend of mine, um, so there is no direct um, connection between me and the brand. I'm just trying to do a presentation here. This is not a review per se. Um, I'm just talking about what I like about this riser, what has been very apparent to me. And I just want to give you a little bit of an overlook because as always, um, buying a bow like this is a big commitment and the whole purpose of the Grip to Tip series is giving you a little bit of an in-hand look. We all love these videos where people are nerding out about gear. You can see it shot, you can see it in hand and I maybe get to um, talk a little bit about the little things that I found and that I really like or maybe not like about the riser and it makes it a commitment or like um, paying for a beautiful piece of equipment like this maybe a little bit easier for you and if not maybe it's just fun to sit down with a cup of coffee and enjoy some dude ramble about a bow. Now what is the Tempest? The Tempest is the metal ILF riser by Border Archery. The Tempest is also as far as I know the ILF aluminum riser out there that is available in the biggest range of lengths. Now you can get this riser as far as I know anything from 17 out to 27 inches in increments of 2. There's a 17, a 19, a 21, a 23, a 25 and a 27 which is amazing. Every single one of them is actually um, optimized for its length. So there's gonna be a little bit of a discrepancy between the different risers when it comes to the amount of deflex measured on the length as far and as well as the limb pad angles. Now all of this is way beyond my pay grade um, so I definitely recommend you to go directly to Border Archery or send Sid um, a message on Facebook or wherever because this guy can tell you for weeks about his risers because he is absolutely to taking it to the extreme when it comes to tinkering. Now um, right off the bat you can see one specific thing about this riser is the way it is designed um, with a lot of deflex it has this bar in front to stabilize it um, and there is actually these knuckle weights now we're gonna go grip to tip as I said on this riser um, so let me get started without much further ado before we're gonna take it out on the range now the grip I have on here is by our core grips out of um, Greece Aris Corpetis makes these amazing biggest range of ILF um, grips not only different models but also for all the different pretty much all the different um, risers on the market which is amazing because in my opinion 
and I think in many other people's opinion as well, um, the grip is the most personal thing on a bow. The grip is making or breaking a bow because it is in fact the only individual part that you're touching with your hand um, on the bow and it makes a world of difference. Now the sun just came out on this beautiful um, fall, crisp but beautiful fall day here in Austria so I just changed a little bit of the camera angle. Now the grip on here is a Melnick Low. Melnick, Alex Melnick, my personal very good friend and coach out of Canada, an amazing archer absolutely amazing archer has designed this grip and it fits me the best in fact I got it um, from a friend of mine Jason Wojo of um, Tough Head Broadheads um, and I got it with a high grip I didn't like that high grip for my um, three under or fixed crawl shooting um, you want to actually shoot a low grip for that because then you're balancing the place on the bow where the pressure is um, to over here where your pressure on the string is um, otherwise, with a high wrist, um, that actually lends itself, as far as I understand, a little bit better to um, split finger shooting because then your hand is actually coming up on the string and as well your pressure point. Now, I love this grip. Border has actually started to equip these risers standard with a Ktenos, I think, grip. I think it's called the Ktenos grip by Arcor, and I'm going to show you that here as well. Um, it comes standard now with that grip. I had it on here as well. It is amazing too. Um, between the two grips, I wouldn't know which one I should rather, um, but um, this is the one I have on here right now. I think actually that this color blends pretty cool with this beautiful riser. Um, the riser itself comes in about every single color under the sun and also way different types of finish. So I think this is anodized. I wouldn't even really know what color this is. I just love it. Um, but it also comes in beat blasting and all kind of finishes. Um, there is really no limit, which is also something um, pretty much as far as I know, um, unprecedented in the ILF realm. This type of um, variety of custom colors you can actually get. Now going a little bit out is um, what you see right off the bat as well in the, in the, in the, in the video and in the B-roll. The machining on this thing is the best I've ever seen on a riser, bar none. Um, the CNCing he does, um, the beautiful finish of all the cutouts, it's just stunning. Um, there is not a single flaw, there's nothing in here where I can even see a tool mark that is not there on purpose. Um, just mind-blowing. I have set it up with all the different knuckles. People make a little bit fun of it, but these knuckles actually result in absolutely amazing balance. Um, as far as as well as the the coke bottle or the, the bottleneck weight down here just below the grip um, And as you can see the balance is Impeccable. I wouldn't change anything about this now going further out You can see a lot of different windows milled and machined into the riser. Like I said, there's not a single sharp corner There's nothing um, That is that is left to um, to to chance so to say. Um, you have attachments for a bow quiver or a sight. Um, a lot of people are shooting these risers actually set up for um, Olympic recurve archery especially the 25 and 23 inch model I would guess. Um, furthermore there is two very interesting attachments here for quivers as far as I understand for um, riser mounted bow quivers um, of a certain type. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is what they're made for. The riser has a super beautiful slim profile. Um, there's nothing sticking out left or right that is not there for a certain purpose. I have set it up right now with um, my favorite rest um, so far that I can just run on all my different bows, um, which is a nap center rest with a little flipper arm. Completely quiet, although it has a little magnetic or springy arm um, that is covered in this shrink tubing. Um, super easy to tune because it has a little square nipple inside so you can tune this rest um, by pulling it off and actually turning it um, quarter turns in or out for um, the specific center shot you want to run. What else is there to say? I love the little windows on the back that actually show you the numbers on your limbs um, just in case you want to check something. So you can actually see through here. I've seen this as well on a Jillo um, Ghost Riser I had in the past that I really liked. 
um, so you can check all your specs there. Now going out to the components, it is absolutely highest quality components all over the riser. Um, everything is stainless steel. You can see that I'm running on the lower side a limb bolt that is actually able to take a weight. Uh, I don't like the weight in there too much, it makes the riser tip forward, but the weight, the extra weight of the limb bolt itself is actually um, helping the balance a little bit. Um, it is running with a screw system, 8 millimeters in the front and 5 millimeters in the back for the, the tiller bolts. And the way that they um, actually manage the lateral adjustment for the limbs is a little bit different rather than having screws on both sides to change the limb angles and change in case you need to do lateral adjustments. Um, it's actually done differently on these bows. These are running these little brass shims that you can screw in um, and all of them do have a little bit of a different side to side, um, uh, a little bit of a side to side orientation if you will, um, that does actually the lateral adjustment for you. Now this is maybe something I want to point out right now. These brass shims are very, very tight in tolerances. Um, this has been something people have reported in the past about. Um, these fit perfectly tight on most limbs, but some limbs actually do have a little bit of an issue going in um, because Border builds these bows not to have a ton of wiggle room on um, purpose, of course. So um, I have not had problems with most of my limbs, but some of them I actually need to get the um, the detent system screwed out a little bit, then put the limbs in and then screw them back in. So that is something that maybe is to be considered. Another thing I want to point out right away, um, this is another 21 inch riser um, that I'm running today with long limbs that I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, this is such a beautiful and versatile platform. Um, I've said that in my Black Elk review, the win and win Black Elk that um, we did in the last video. So I thought I'm just going to throw this right after talking about one of the most affordable 21 inch ILF risers on the market and here we have one of the highest end if not the highest end ILF riser on the market so it's a little bit of a contrast um, this allows me to make a bow anywhere from 62 to 66 inches right now it's set up with long limbs for limbs for 66 inches and there's even XL limbs on the market that you could make this into a 68 inch bow if you want to so a super super versatile platform now one more thing I want to say about the limb bolts as you can see they actually have this very interesting plastic shim that is adjusting itself to the angle of the limb so the limb is actually not just having to run with its edge down here um, against the bolt um, and just rest on the very edge of its of its end there but it actually the shim itself is adjusting to the angle of the limb and it's resting with way less vibration and way less noise in these limb pockets that way. So this riser has one of the least amounts of, um, of noise and vibration in all of the ILF bows that I have and it's quite a few. Now a couple of last words um, about how I've set up the bow. Um, these are Wild Mountain bi-directional carbon and foam limbs. I have these in lighter poundage as well and they just came up recently for sale um, online second hand. They usually cost about 400 euro. Um, no idea really what the riser new cost because I bought it used but I think it's right around the 600 to 700 euro mark um, as far as I remember. Um, back to the limbs. The limbs I have in lighter poundage as well. I, they came up for about 160 bucks. Amazing limb. It says by Wild Mountain, but they're actually made in Korea by MK, which is my favorite limb company of all times. As far as I understand, it's actually some of the best engineers that used to make Samic limbs that formed their own company called MK, and they're absolutely top line in the Olympic archery world. Um, and I have several limbs of them, had several limbs of them by now, and they're the most smooth pulling, quickest, and most stable limb that I've ever shot bar none um, and I think the success of a lot of Olympic gold medalists um, say enough about how good these limbs are um, like I said 
these are a mid-range limb for them that is marked or like rebranded by Wild Mountain but they're actually made in Korea by MK and so when they came up I had to snatch them and actually I got them today in the morning so I set this bow up today just before the video tuning was a breeze very very easy um, to set the knocking point um, did a couple of adjustments and here we go bear chef flying beautifully from 25 meters shout out to my friend Klaas Andersen um, longboard champion up in Denmark who is making all my strings this one is a 16 strand um, Spectra 652 in orange which is easy to see for me um, I'm running as always these variety of arrows are actually all the same I just fletched some with my classic wild fletching um, Josh Echterling's beautiful um, natural turkey feathers um, and I made a very similar setup to this um, just running some regular AE elite veins and they are actually flying perfectly out of this bow um, with this setup very simple rest setup but it allows me as well to shoot veins I actually set this one up with the AAE um, mini max so an incredible amount of helical super easy to see in flight just an absolute pleasure on the front what could else what what could it be um, it's an axis shaft hit insert top head components um, shout out to my guys the top head I just love their components um, bulletproof and I'm actually running a top head collar on the front and in the back indestructible error for me some of the points points are very bent from me shooting them into rocks and this and that but I'm not managing to break one of these so that's that let's have a look what this ball shoots like so we're just about at 12 13 meters nothing too crazy and I'm just gonna shoot for the middle target there running a little bit of crawl just set this up so I haven't done my fixed crawl setting but this one is now set up for a 26 meter point on um, so for our ranges here in Austria the ones that are set up with world archery out to 30 meters um, I have good holding points everywhere I'm shooting a system I'm shooting um, over the point of my arrow it's the way I do it um, there's nothing to say as for um, how people shoot or what they shoot I think everybody should just shoot whatever they're happy with this is what I'm most happy with and having the biggest fun with so here we go Absolutely no vibration. The only thing that could be very much criticized here is my form. Especially on camera. It deteriorates. try not to shoot the ones with the lighted knocks because that would be just a hustle to turn them off all the time let's give it one last all right just gonna bring you over there like I said this is not a massive distance probably ruined an arrow there um, all in the gold and this has more to do in this case I think with the riser than with anything else now I think if at this point I want to really talk about the different reasons why I think this riser is so stable and so beautiful in hand um, it has a lot of deflex the deflex is definitely the big um, selling point or a very important point about this riser and it also has um, to do with this um, bar on the front here this is something that should stabilize the extreme deflex of this riser border archery is trying with this riser um, is to get the most pre-tension out of the limb the most efficiency um, and smooth pull while the deflex um, and the way that they 
have pretty much tried balancing this riser from every kind of angle with strings and whatnot. Um, the deflex is really helping to avoid torque. Now, if I was to lay a shaft through the limb pockets of this specific riser here, and I hope this is apparent, if you would measure the distance from the limb pockets to the throat of the grip, you're getting way above two inches. I would say you're at about two and a quarter to something, whatever. So anything that you're um, that your grip, the throat of the grip, is in front of the, the limbs, in front of the limb pockets, it is harder for you to torque the bow. And I'm sure when this video is airing, Sid is going to come out and going to correct a lot of the things that I'm saying because I'm not an engineer, but I'm trying my best here to, um, to see or to um, regurgitate what I've learned about this riser and what I'm feeling as well. So it's very difficult to torque because of the deflex. Now at the same time when you have a deflex riser the problem is very often that people or uh, companies put rather relaxed limb pad angles on here um, which is taking away a lot of the performance. What the Tempest does is that it works with a rather extreme or rather straight up and down limb pad angle so you're getting the benefits of the front of, front of center or front of the limb um, deflex riser but at the same time you're getting a lot of performance out of the limbs because even at the low brace height um, they are actually having a little bit more pretension. Now I probably could ramble without getting to the point about this for a while but I'm trying to really get to the point here. The thing is that the brace height itself if measured from your string to the throat of the grip is pretty usual or normal for a 21 inch riser. Right now it's 8 inches. However, the brace height up here at your limb pockets where I measure my tiller, which is set up even by the way for my type of shooting, um, this here is very low. So we are less than 6 inches, about 5.5 inches. That means that the bow can actually accelerate or the limbs can accelerate to a very far or very low point which would usually not be normal with a straight up and down or more straight up and down riser because you would literally hit your arm every single time and the riser would not be able to take it most likely especially on a wooden riser because too much of the energy of the limb would slap into the riser i hope i'm hoping to do this information some justice Another thing that comes with having this low brace height on your limbs um, is you can put some pretension in them, but the, the recurve itself is not really opened up. On a regular riser, um, like for example the WF-19, which I'm going to be talking about in the future as well, I love that riser to death, um, it is completely the opposite. You would have um, the grip much more in line with the limb pockets, a lot less deflex. I'm going to talk about how that other riser is managing that problem. Um, but the pretension in the limb would have a much higher brace height here, which means that the limb or like the recurve would be already a lot more opened up in the brace height position or at brace. With these here, what you get is while you're pulling the limb, it feels a lot smoother because there's less pretension on the limb and as you're getting out to your anchor point the recurve is actually opening up in a timing that makes the limb feel a lot smoother so it's basically uncamming off the recurve wow i'm not doing the best job explaining them but i hope some of this information is coming across now as it sm smashes back so to say to brace um, after the release it is actually giving the limb more performance because it's it's basically snapping back into a much more extreme recurve as the limb as is at a much lower brace. Again, at a regular bow um, where you have the 8 inch brace height, um, your limb would already look like this at brace height, um, so to say, and it, it slams back only into this position. On the Tempest, it slams back all the way into that position, which makes it 
the limb, even a regular recurve limb like this, act a little bit more. Not exactly, of course, like that, but a little bit more like a super curved limb, if you want to put it into Lehman's terms. I really hope um, some of this info came across. I can only say that I didn't really understand the whole hype around different border bows. Um, 10, 15 years back when I started shooting longbow competitions, etc., etc., border was always this. Uh, all the different models, maybe the longbows, all the different recurves, um, also the wooden recurve ILF risers they have. Um, people would just talk about them a bunch and I never really understood. Then I got the Tempest. Um, and it was not a riser that I found optically to be very attractive and I wanted to shoot but then I started shooting it and I just realized that all the little different details that that Borda would talk about that my friends would talk about they made really a difference that um, made really a difference in practice um, apparent benefits of the mix between an extreme or like more pretension limb head angle with the stability in shooting of this weight system and the forward of center is absolutely amazing. Folks, that was our little tour around the, this beautiful course here that's just behind my house, basically. Um, I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of an idea about the Tempest. There's definitely a lot of things that I forgot. I just want to give a little bit of a conclusion. 
So what I was shooting was the Tempest 21 inch um, with a nap center rest that has the little flipper arm on it. Um, I run pretty much all of the weight system, the knuckle on the front, the brass knuckles, um, the bottleneck sh um, shaped weight. I also have an attachment down here on the other limb bolt, but I'm not running that. Now on the bottom limb, because this one is a little bit twisted or a little bit off, um, I was actually, I um, installed one of the other shims because of the different lateral adjustment system that Border designed. Um, so I talked about that as well. As far as limbs, I'm actually running these Wild Mountain made by MK Korea um, limbs. They're foam and bi-directional carbon. There's 46 pounds on a 70 on a 25 inch riser on a 70 inch bow. So this one here is a 60 inch bow and it's running exactly at 50 pounds. I measured it. A um, couple of limb savers, uh, a nice uh, 652 Spectra 16 strand string by Klaas, uh, my friend Klaas Andersen out of Denmark. And I think that's pretty much summing it up. Um, my conclusion about this bow, we're still getting to know each other. Um, it's mostly my fault. There is very little vibration, if any, in the bow. If you set it up properly, bow tunes very well, very easily. Nothing is coming loose, nothing is rattling. Um, and the added deflex that I talked about is really um, a great design feature. So, folks, I hope this was fun for you. Leave me feedback. Um, I'm not really managing to make these videos any shorter than they are because I just want to give you a couple of um, aero flights as well, talk in, um, in depth about the archery equipment. Um, this is actually filmed on another day than the first part of the video because um, I ran out of light and weather right now is extremely on and off. So I left when it was cold. Now I'm actually pretty warm. Um, and yeah, so my shooting is nothing to write home about. Um, if anything, I just wanted to give you a couple of funny and a couple of fun footages of the Aeroflight. I think that's always um, just a pleasure to watch. If you want to get in touch with me, um, find me on Instagram and on Facebook under Woodsman's Finest. I'm a spoon carver and greenwood worker. Um, I'm a tool designer. I uh, do a lot of content creation and pictures. And yeah, if you want to get in touch with me, Woodsman's Finest on Instagram and Facebook. All links are below. All the links to my courses, they are right now actually 5 euro for the first entire month of 85 hours and 35 courses all together about spoon carving, sharpening, designing and whatnot. So you find all the links down below including my tools of course um, so thank you very much for watching like and subscribe um, these videos are a lot of work and um, that's the best way to let me know that you're actually enjoying them thank you for everybody who got in touch with me about the videos before who wanted a couple of more um, informations or like some advice uh, or what I would recommend as far as the, the bows and risers and limbs that I've um, reviewed before so I hope you enjoyed I wish you a beautiful day uh, and I'm gonna see you next time cheers